Hello friends. Welcome to my YouTube channel Material Welding. Today topic is 885 degrees Fahrenheit or 475 degrees Celsius embrittlement. This is the first damage mechanisms listed in the API 571-2020 edition. We are going to cover all damage mechanisms of the API 571 by separate videos on each topic. So please subscribe our channel to get regular updates on the new videos. So what is 885 degrees Fahrenheit or 475 degrees Celsius embrittlement? It is a loss of ductility and fracture toughness of the material, due to a metallurgical change, that can occur in stainless steels, containing a ferrite phase, as the result of exposure in temperature range 600 degrees Fahrenheit to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit or 315 degrees Celsius to 540 degrees Celsius. This type of embrittlement can lead to cracking failure. When the stainless steels are heated into the range 400 to 550 degrees Celsius, although the effect is most pronounced at 475 degrees Celsius, a dramatic fall in toughness is observed after extended exposure. This is due to the formation of chromium-rich domains and precipitates within the iron-rich matrix by spinodal decomposition of ferrite at these temperatures. This effect becomes more pronounced as chromium content increases. This phenomenon is termed 475 degrees Celsius embrittlement as the rate of embrittlement is highest at 475 degrees Celsius. It is also called thermal aging embrittlement. Let's know which materials are being affected by the 885 degrees Fahrenheit embrittlement. 400 series S's, for example 405, 409, 410, 410 S, 430, and 446. Duplex stainless steels such as alloys 2205, 2304, and 2507. Austenitic, 300 series, stainless steel weld metals which normally contain up to about 10% ferrite phase to prevent hot cracking during welding. Critical factors for the 885 degrees Fahrenheit embrittlement. The critical factor are the A alloy composition, particularly chromium content, amount of ferrite phase, and operating temperature. B. The lower chromium alloys, for example S is 405, SS409, SS410, and 410 S, are less susceptible to embrittlement. The higher chromium ferritic stainless steels, for example SS430, which contains 16% to 18% chromium, and SS446 containing 23% to 27% chromium and duplex stainless steels, 22% to 25% CR, are much more susceptible. In 300 series, alloy SS308 and SS347H have found evidence of 885 degrees Fahrenheit embrittlement in Sharpie impact testing. These alloys weld metals were aged in approx 850 to 885 degrees Fahrenheit. Increasing amounts of ferrite phase in duplex stainless steels increase susceptibility to damage when operating in the high temperature range of concern. A dramatic increase in the ductile to brittle transition temperature will occur. Duplex stainless steels also need to be cooled rapidly after welding to avoid formation of embrittling phases. High temperature exposure is required for embrittlement. A primary consideration is operating time at temperature within the critical temperature range. Damage is cumulative and results from the formation of an embrittling ordered metallic phase or alpha prime phase that occurs most readily at approximately 885 degrees Fahrenheit. Additional time is required to reach maximum embrittlement at temperatures above or below 885 degrees Fahrenheit. For example, 
Many thousands of us may be required to cause embrittlement at 600 degrees Fahrenheit or 315 degrees Celsius. The effect on toughness is not pronounced at the operating temperature but is significant at lower temperatures experienced during plant shutdowns, startup, or upsets. Embrittlement can also result from heat treatment if the material is held within or cooled slowly through the embrittlement range. Affected Units or Equipments in Refinery 885 degrees Fahrenheit embrittlement can be found in any unit where susceptible alloys are exposed to the embrittling temperature range. Most refineries limit the use of ferritic steel to non-pressure boundary applications because of this damage mechanism. Common examples include fractionator trays and internals in high-temperature vessels used in crude, vacuum, fluid catalytic cracker, FCC, and cocker units. Typical failures include cracking when attempting to weld or to straighten bent, upset tower trays made of type 409 and 410SS. This occurs often with vacuum tower trays of this material. Other examples include duplex stainless steel heat exchanger tubes and other components exposed to temperatures above 600 degrees Fahrenheit or 315 degrees Celsius for extended time periods. Duplex stainless steels are normally limited to a maximum service temperature of 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Appearance or morphology of damage 885 degrees Fahrenheit embrittlement is a metallurgical change that is not readily apparent with metallography. The existence of 885 degrees Fahrenheit embrittlement can possibly be identified by an increase in hardness in affected areas. Failure during bend testing or impact testing of samples removed from service is the most positive indicator of embrittlement. Most cases of embrittlement are found in the form of cracking during turnarounds or during startup or shutdown when the material is at lower temperature where the effects of embrittlement are most detrimental. Embrittled 410S has been shown to require a temperature of about 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius before adequate toughness has been restored. Prevention Mitigation The best practice to prevent 885 degrees Fahrenheit embrittlement is to avoid exposing the susceptible material to the embrittling range or to use a non-susceptible material. Cracking of embrittled material can often be avoided through temperature controls during startup and shutdown. 885 degrees Fahrenheit embrittlement is reversible by heat treatment followed by rapid cooling. The deembrittling heat treatment temperature is typically 1100 degrees Fahrenheit or 595 degrees Celsius or higher and may not be practical for many equipment items. If the deembrittled component is exposed to the same service conditions, it will reembrittle faster than it did initially. Inspection and Monitoring this damage mechanism is very difficult to find prior to equipment failure. It is also time dependent and may take a while to develop in service. Online inspection is not applicable. The most effective method of detecting or confirming embrittlement is removing and impact or bend testing a sample of the suspect material. A failed bend test confirmed the presence of embrittlement. Visual inspection to see cracking presence is also one indicator. Field hardness testing may distinguish embrittled from non-embrittled material, but hardness testing alone is generally not definitive. Also, the hardness test itself may produce cracking, depending on the degree of embrittlement. Hammer testing, field impact testing, is considered a destructive test. Tapping a suspect component with a hammer may crack the component, depending on the degree of embrittlement. Hammer testing might confirm that a component is not badly embrittled, if it does not crack, or that it is embrittled, if it does crack. Summary Description 
885 degrees Fahrenheit embrittlement is loss of ductility and material fracture toughness due to metallurgical changes resulted by the high temperature exposure. Critical temperature range 600 degrees Fahrenheit to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit or 315 degrees Celsius to 540 degrees Celsius. Affected materials Ferritic materials such as SS400 series, duplexed stainless steels, and austenitic SS containing more than 10% ferrite phase. Preventive measures Avoid susceptible ferritic steels to embrittlement range. If required, use non-susceptible grades. Heat treatment is an option to regain original metallurgical phases. Inspection and monitoring Hardness test to identify embrittled material using portable field hardness tester. Destructive test such as bend test and Sharpie test of the suspected material.